edition of LCAT News Update. I'm Allie Carrington. The school committee held a public hearing on Monday to hear comment on a proposal to institute a required civics course at Esong Meadow High School. Proponent Michael Harrigan brought the issue to Monday's public hearing by collecting the required signatures on a petition requesting that the school committee vote to adopt the new requirement. How can students be expected to make wise decisions regarding who will represent them in state, local, and national governments when so many know so little about how our government works? If students lack a basic understanding of our system of government, they're not likely to participate in the process as adults. At the present time, less than 20% of students at East Long Meadow High School take AP government. These students know government. What about the other 80%? Town residents, students, parents, teachers, and representatives of the high school's administration, guidance, and social studies departments were given time to comment on the proposal. A good American government and civics course for all students helps leads to their lifetime learning and engagement in the democratic political process. We blame kids for having a 7% voting in town. What are the adults? 15% in East Long Meadow? You know, I think it's time that we stop blaming young people and stop putting more MCAS and more requirements and more mandates on our young people. And we start acting like the adults in the room. And maybe the news, and when we turn the TV on, the perspective will change to people being respectful. And then kids will start wanting to get involved in our country again. Civics courses, and the older the better, remind people that just as they have obligations to family, to God, and their neighbors, they have duties to the society to help maintain our government and the protections and services it provides. I support the petitioner's drive to teach U.S. civics to all high school seniors. If they're getting enough civics, as many of the previous speakers, particularly teachers, have said, that's, that's wonderful. I just wonder if they're understanding that they're getting that if it's not put in a core subject. Civic education is certainly important, but I try to impart upon our students, and I know that our staff does well as well, civic virtue. How do you go about doing your responsibilities and providing your service to your community? Are you gonna be selfless or are you gonna be selfish? Are you gonna to try to make your, your community greater for all? That's the question. You know, I am happy to answer any questions because what I want to do is provide as much information as possible for our school committee to make the best decision they can possibly make. I just want all the facts to be out there. I want all the information to be out there. And if we're going to have a, an honest and open discussion, let's talk about reasonable solutions that can achieve our goals as a community and as a school. Thank you. The school committee deferred any action on the question at the close of the hearing. The full discussion is available on LCAT's cable and YouTube channels. At last week's council meeting, the council opened a public hearing on a proposed amendment to the zoning bylaw that would prohibit the retail sale, manufacture, testing, or other activities related to the distribution or sale of recreational marijuana in town. Public hearing. The East La Meadow Town Council will hold a public hearing on October 10th, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. in the media room of the Council on Aging located at 328 North Main Street to address a proposal for a new bylaw prohibiting the use, growth, cultivation, manufacture, and or sale of marijuana for recreational use in the town. There was a lengthy discussion about the intent of the amendment following a question from a resident. I thought the state approved the use the town deny the use of marijuana when the state has already approved it by a voter election. The state law says marijuana usage in the, in the state is permitted. Medical marijuana prescribed by a physician is permitted. Medical facilities that issue or allow um, the dispensing of medical marijuana pursuant to a prescription are permitted in the community. This bylaw has no effect on any of those. Well, the only issue I'm assuming, and I, and I ask this only for clarification, that in the proposed language that's submitted under 3.01 prohibited uses, 
general uses, those two words there? It's strictly, Jim, from the notice, of the notice that says the effort of this public hearing was to prohibit the uses. And the notices are, no, are only notices to bring so, people in. Then great. That's funny. I would so draw. I, my, I would draw my question. That's going to be based that's not strictly be. on what the on what was presented to me in the paper. But with no representative from the planning board at the hearing, the council ultimately voted to continue the hearing to November 14th at 6:30 p.m. On Saturday, October 14th, the East Long Meadow Fire Department held its annual open house with apparatus on display, free pizza, a bounce house, activities, and free stuff for the kids. On hand this year were representatives of the Health Department and the East Song Meadow Library as well, highlighting their own programs, but emphasizing the collaborative efforts among the town governments to provide service, information, and resources to the community. Also on Saturday, the East Song Meadow Bark Park celebrated its fifth anniversary at Heritage Park. Bark Park Association President Bill Cazellas says the anniversary marks a milestone he might not have anticipated when he started. Um, I started with the Bark Park about five years ago when the whole project began. It was part of my retirement project. That's the way I uh, approached it. I wanted something to do in my retirement. Didn't realize I'm going to still be at it at five years, but, uh, but it's a labor of love and I'm really enjoying it. Cazella says the park has been popular in part because of the policies the association has put in place to make the park safe and welcoming for patrons. We do have a registration process and we're the only ones around that, that uh, does have a registration process. And what it is is uh, we have a form that's filled out and it's sent into our post office box. And uh, we check for expiration for rabies primarily. And once that's approved, we send out a tag, a colored tag that's good for the year that it happens to be in. And then that shows every, everybody, including other, other uh, dog owners, that the dog has had all its shots and it's safe to be here. And uh, people seem to really enjoy that. They think that's a good idea, so that's what we stuck with. Cazella says the Bark Park is accessible throughout the year and that even in the snow, the dogs do their part to keep the playground open. The Bark Park is open from, uh, uh, from dawn to dusk. Um, and we are open uh, 365 days a year, basically. So basically, if you can get in the park, we don't have a lock on it, so some, some people bring a shovel in the wintertime, just a shovel of clearing to open the gate, and once the gate's open, it's free rain, and the dogs uh, seem to do a good job of patting down the snow. So it works out pretty good, and uh, you can come anytime during the, during the day. Anyone seeking more information can visit the East Long Meadow Bark Park Association's Facebook page. That will do it for this edition of LCAT News Update. I'm Allie Carrington. Thanks for watching. See you next week.